what prompted you guys to start this story in the first place? Well, you know, after the tragedy at Aurora last summer, we just were talking about about gun gun deaths in Colorado, public policy and all that sort of stuff. And and sort of talking about the fact that Colorado had been, you know, ground zero on two of these with Columbine and and the movie theater shooting. And so we we just started talking about the fact that those those terrific tragedies get, you know, a huge amount of public attention, but that we suspected they represented a tiny fraction of gun deaths in the state. And so we decided to look and see what we could find. So you guys asked the, the state, um, what is it, vital records? Or? State Health Department. We, re we requested from the State Health Department 12 years of gun death data. This was culled from death certificates in the state. And basically everything that was ruled, um, you know, death by gunfire, um, we got the, with the data for that. And then, did you know at first that you were going to look at neighborhoods, or, or did you just say, let's look and see what we find? We started out just looking at sort of the raw numbers, the fact that 76% of the deaths are suicides, about 20% or one in five are homicides. There's a small number that fall into other categories like justified police shootings and so forth. But we realized we had the ability to um, plot the census tract for each of the victims, where each of the victims lived. There's 1,249 census tracts in the state used by the Census Bureau. You know, most of them in cities constitute neighborhoods. Out in rural areas, they're larger. But um, we just decided to plot them all and see what, what we found. And uh, why concentrate on this one neighborhood in Colorado Springs? Well, we were we were looking for the highest number of gun deaths over that 12-year period of 2000 through 2011, and that was in this census tract in Colorado Springs. And so that was interesting to us. We you know, went into it thinking that the most deaths might have been in a census tract in Denver or Aurora or something like that. Um, the other thing that was interesting about it was that it was a high number of homicides and a high number of suicides. So of the 24 deaths, 12 were homicides and 12 were suicides. What we saw in a lot of other neighborhoods is that one or the other drove the numbers. So there are neighborhoods that have nearly as many gun deaths that almost all were suicides and neighborhoods that have nearly as many gun deaths that almost all of them were homicides. This one was a little unusual in, in that it was so many of each. And then, and then we just started talking about what would what would we find if we just looked at the makeup of the neighborhood, the socioeconomic makeup, the, the type of uh, housing that's available, whether it's a commercial district. And, and so we just thought it, it would be interesting and, and telling to look at, you know, this one sliver of Colorado and the gun deaths that happened there.